Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to take a look at the King Kong Fly Egg. The Fly Egg comes in 130 and 100 millimeter sizes. I'm going to be going over both the 130 as well as the 100, but they'll be in a separate video. There's a lot of different receivers you can choose from this time around. Hopefully there is one compatible for you, but if not, you can always choose to plug and play and install your own receiver. I received the FR Sky XM, which is a 16 channel S bus receiver. It's a good receiver that gets excellent range, and best of all, it weighs just 1 gram. If you purchased a King Kong Micro recently, I'm betting it came in a box like this. All King Kong quads, 130mm and under, come in a nice plastic box. If you're anything like me, you'll probably find another use for it. Unfortunately, once the props are installed, the fly egg no longer fits inside, but it's still a good box to keep around. You could always use it as storage, or if you have a small enough charger, you can do this. What I like about this is everything fits inside, like little adapters that I'm always losing, and I can just grab it and go. Alright, let's see what we get inside this box. We got some propellers. And some screws, prop guards, motor guards, and screws. We got a 350. Unfortunately, it's just 35C discharge. That is definitely unfortunate. Some rubber bands, prop remover, micro USB cord, and last but not least. Oh wait, actually, got some instructions here. English on one side and Chinese on the other. And the star of the show, the Fly Egg 130. It's actually lighter than it looks. I thought it was going to be heavier because of the aluminum canopy, but it's not that bad. You know, I say this in all my videos, I just can't get over how thin and fragile the XM's antenna is. If you pull on it too hard, it will rip or if it gets bent back and forth too much it will rip it really doesn't take too much force to damage it I just wish they would have used a thicker wire the fly egg uses only two screws to hold the flight controller and ESC to the frame taking a look at the stack shows why the ESC only has two holes I guess they couldn't fit all four holes on in between the two boards is a plastic bracket which supports the flight controller in areas where there are no holes. And underneath the ESC are two rubber bushings. As you can see, there is one in the back left and one in the front right. I did have an issue with the boards not being level. No matter what I did, I just couldn't get it to sit straight. I ended up swapping out the rubber bushings for some plastic nuts, which does a better job at keeping the boards level. I understand the whole reason behind using rubber mounts to dampen the vibration and don't get me wrong I think I it would normally work great but in my case I just had a hard time getting the boards to sit level. Enough with the bad stuff let's go over some of the good. The ESCs on this quad are 10 amp BL Heli S which means it's capable of running one shot all the way up to D shot and it will support 2S to 3S LiPos. The flight controller is a Pico PLX F3. Unfortunately, no built in OSD, but it does use the MPU 6000, and all you need to know about that is it lets you run at 8 kHz gyro sample rate. Moving right along, let's take a look at this power connector. It looks like a balance connector. What the heck? It's a balance connector connected to 22 to 24 gauge wires. I've never seen anything like this before. Maybe King Kong knows something I don't know and this is a way to extract even more power. Why would they do this? Anyways, I I suggest swapping this out for an XT30 or at least a JST and ASAP. Balance connectors are meant for just that, balancing, not to power a quad. Up next are some 1105 7000 kV motors, unmarked and looking super clean. These are one of the quietest motors I've ever flown. They're also super smooth. 
I think the reason why they're so quiet has something to do with the closed off enclosure. Although they make less noise, the lack of ventilation causes the motors to get hot fairly quickly. I haven't had an issue yet, but I feel like in the long run this may have dire consequences, especially if you're not careful. I definitely try to be. I'll run one battery and let it cool off for a few minutes before starting another one. Going to the front, let's take a look at the camera section. Unlike your typical 3-in-1 camera VTX antenna setup where it's just one piece, this is more like a regular setup where you have the camera and then a separate VTX. The camera is an 800 TVL CMOS with a nice bright and vibrant picture. Everything was easy to see and I was very comfortable with the 150 degree field of view. The camera is held in place using some PCB boards and they can be placed into different slots in the canopy to change the up tilt angle. My gripe with this was that I had to remove half the canopy to gain access and then I had to fiddle around getting the mounts to fit in just right. You really have to be dexterous to get the board to fit in so that was pretty annoying. Next we have a 16 channel 5.8 GHz VTX that you can switch between 25 and 100 milliwatts. It uses a dipole antenna and works really good. My tip here is if you have a channel that's a little bit fuzzy try a different channel. Sometimes different locations will work better with different channels and you know I I don't know why it is, it just is. With the Fly Egg, I've had great video quality and video reception throughout my entire testing for both indoors and out. Before you go out and start flying, here's a few things you'll want to do. First, through Betaflight, you'll want to make sure everything's set up correctly. It's currently flashed with Betaflight 316, and I suggest staying on this one as there are issues with 317. You could also try 3.2 but it's not as straightforward as a normal firmware flash. For more information on 3.2, check out Joshua Bardwell's videos. He's got a good guide on how to set that up. Alright, let's start by adjusting a few things in Betaflight. For those of you who purchased the plug and play, choose Serial RX on UART3. Otherwise, it should already be selected and you can just move on to the next step. Next is the configuration. There's a few things that I changed. If you want to make sure your quad is performing at its full potential, change it from multi-shot to D-shot 600. I also deselected the disarm motors option. This makes the motor spin up as soon as you hit the arm switch. This allows you to flip and roll at very low or even zero throttle. In addition, it allows you to use a switch to arm instead of the thumbstick. I think we all want to make our quads perform at 100%. Unless you're new, I don't see a reason why you wouldn't. The flight controller and ESCs on the Fly Egg allow for 8K gyro update and 8K PID loop rates. So it's a good idea to bump that up from the 4K 4K that it came stock with. After you hit the save, check to make sure your CP loaded is around or below 35%. One last thing under this tab is the other features section. I have just the LED selected. I don't use any of the other features so I uncheck the rest. Alright so this is how I set up my modes tab. I like to use acro for FPV flying and I'm still not good enough for acro on line of sight so I keep horizon mode on there just to be safe. I also added a buzzer switch which in my opinion is a must for micros especially when you don't know the general vicinity or even when you think you know these tiny micros have a way of kind of blending into their backgrounds like a chameleon and even when it's right in front of you it can be hard to see. I thought the King Kong tune was pretty good, very flyable, great for racing or even just cruising around, but I felt the flips and rolls were a bit too slow. So I increased the pids a bit, increased the rates a bit and came up with this. It's still easy to control but flips and rolls are much faster. Alright let's check out the new tune.
all right so here's a couple other things that i did um i had a little bit of an issue with jello and it was because the camera was kind of loose i guess the mount doesn't hold it very well so what i did was i just put some glue pretty much all over the place but hey there's no more jello uh, what else? Let's see. Oh yeah, I changed the XT30. Definitely recommend doing that. And also the the motor wires do tend to hang loose, especially after a crash. So you might want to tie those down. Uh, what else? I guess that's that's pretty much it. Well, aside from the Aside from the whole flight controller thing not being level, and I guess that's pretty much it. Alright, I'm gonna wrap this one up with this line of sight clip. I think it's a good representation of just how fast this thing is. As always, thank you very much for watching. See ya.